Thank you. Thank you. Salam. Hello. Good evening, everyone. I would also like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the, and custodians of the land on which we gather this evening and pay my respects to their elders past, present, and those yet to emerge. I would like to thank them for caring for this land. My name is Sitara Mohammadi, and I belong to the Hazara people who are facing continuous genocide for more than 130 years. We all gather tonight for one reason, and one reason only, to call for stop Hazara genocide in Afghanistan. Across the world this week, in over 100 cities, across five continents, thousands if not millions of people have come together and are gathering to stand in solidarity with the Hazara people of Afghanistan following the latest targeted suicidal attack on Kaj Educational Center which resulted in the carnage of 57 young Hazara students and wounded 110 others, mostly young Hazara girls. At the outset, it's important that we acknowledge that all people in Afghanistan are suffering from the widespread violence and human rights atrocities perpetrated by various groups, including the Taliban. Women's rights and girls' rights are severely restricted. We condemn this. However, it's important that we acknowledge, we raise awareness and we talk about the systematically targeted attacks and enduring genocide that the Hazaras are facing. So why are we calling this a genocide? Let me refer you to Article 2 of the 1948 Genocide Convention, which defines the term as the intention to destroy in whole or in part a national ethnical, racial, or religious group. That's what the Hazaras have been facing in and enduring since the late 19th century, when it formally commenced under the rule of Abdul Rahman. The Hazaras have been facing genocide for the last 130 years. During the 20th century, it did not stop. The genocidal policies continued, both through physical attacks as well as non-physical violence, including the systematic exclusionary policies, the institutionalization of marginalization of the Hazaras. Until the 1970s, Hazaras were barred from attending universities and joining the government. During the regime of the Taliban during the late 1990s, it is one of the darkest parts of the Hazara history. 
Hazaras were massacred in large numbers, including the infamous massacre of Mazari Sharif in 1998, when in a matter of few days, thousands, thousands of Hazaras were massacred based on their ethnic identity, their religious affiliation. That's what the Hazaras have been enduring over the last 130 years. Since 2001, Hazaras have also suffered an extra layer on top of that ethnic and religious elements of genocide. Since 2007, 2001, rather, the Hazaras have been targeted because of their educational values, their human rights, their subscription to freedom, and to democratic values. So why the hashtag Hazara stop Hazara genocide? I think you can draw that answer from what I've said before, that the Hazaras have been facing an ongoing genocide. And it's time that we stand up, that we raise awareness, and we have the genocide of the Hazaras formally recognized by the international community. The hashtag Stop Hazara Genocide was formally launched last year in June after yet another attack in May 2021 on the girls' high school, Sayyid al Shahada, which took hundreds of lives and wounded many, many others. I mentioned that the root of the genocide of the Hazaras is deep and entrenched in the history of Afghanistan. In the late 1990s, 62% of the Hazara population was eliminated. And it has been enduring ever since, either through physical violence or through genocidal policies through the government and through the institutions in Afghanistan. So what are our global calls to action? We call on the United Nations and other broader international community to formally recognize the systematic attacks against the Hazara people in Afghanistan as a genocide. We know what the definition of genocide is, and it is about time that we recognize the, in, the endless sufferings and the enduring atrocities that our people have suffered as a genocide. Two, we call on the United Nations to urgently form a commission of inquiry into the ongoing genocide of the Hazara people in Afghanistan. The Commission should have the full mandate to investigate, gather information and report to the United Nations on their findings and recommend specific measures to prevent further atrocities against our people. Third, we call on all countries in the international community including Australia, to take urgent measures to provide protection for the Hazara people in Afghanistan, including by creating an internationally assisted and monitored self-defense mechanism. Fourth, we call on the International Criminal Court to open a case on the atrocities and the enduring genocide that the Hazaras have suffered and to investigate these genocides. Fifth, we call on all UN refugee resettling states, including Australia, to prioritize the resettlement of Hazara refugees as a special group of highly vulnerable people 
under the serious threat of genocide in Afghanistan. Lastly, to all individuals, organizations, media, members of parliament, I urge you, please, please understand and recognize the systematic attacks and the atrocities that the Hazaras are facing is not just part of the general violence in Afghanistan. There are extra layers, ethnic identity, religious affiliation, subscription to human rights, liberal values, education, that the Hazaras are suffering to recognize the genocide of the Hazaras and to not censor their identity when they release statements, reports. We must do justice to the victims, censoring or filtering their identity, not mentioning their ethnic and religious identity is an injustice. I urge you all to get on Twitter, use the hashtag Stop Hazara Genocide and make your voice heard to the world. Stop Hazara Genocide. Thank you, Sitara, and 